Over the past few years, Don't Nod has become a celebrated producer of narrative adventure games with Life is Strange, Life is Strange 2, and Tell Me Why. Twin Mirror is their latest story to tell, complete with lots of dialogue choices, mysteries to solve, and bits of the unexpected. It's also Don't Nod's first self-published title, but unfortunately, it doesn't resonate as strongly as their other works. Dad, not everything is a life lesson. Actually, I was talking to Muley here. Rather than telling another coming-of-age story with teenagers or young adults, Twin Mirror puts you in the shoes of Sam Higgs, a middle-aged reporter returning home for a friend's funeral. Coming back to the small town of Basswood, West Virginia, means confronting old wounds and seeing people that he left on poor terms. However, beyond the awkward reunions, you quickly learn that his friend's death may not have been an accident, prompting Sam to reluctantly extend his stay. In times like these, we need the comforting touch of others. At least I do. This is no simple detective story, though, as you're quickly confronted with the fact that Sam sees the world a little differently. Interacting with things from Sam's past triggers his mind palace, bringing you to an otherworldly space clouded with memories as well as fears. Then, while you're in the real world, a mysterious alter ego often appears, conversing with Sam and guiding his decisions. This is a wake. If you poke around, people may end up poking back. These psychological interactions both have interesting potential to mirror the larger-than-life elements of Life is Strange, but neither of these devices is ever really introduced in a satisfying way. You're left trying to interpret what they're about from fragments that feel inconsistent. Some signs point to the idea that these stem from some unnamed mental condition, while at other times they feel unquestionably like superpowers. Despite being such a central part of Sam's character, their presence is taken for granted without really being examined in any detail. Oddly enough, Sam's alter ego isn't even given a name, so we've taken to calling him Glasses. So either help me or get out of my head. It's your life, Sam. I just live here. In terms of gameplay, these features become more of an obstacle than a draw. In addition to traditional adventure game mechanics like searching environments for clues and rummaging through emails, there are times when Sam's mind palace is used to put the pieces together. Essentially, by changing variables in different fragments of a scene, you determine how an event might have played out in the past or predict an outcome for the future, swapping things around until you find the sequence that matches the evidence. These segments are somewhat puzzle-like, but picking one option over another can just feel like a shot in the dark. It's interesting at first when you explore the possibilities, but if you don't find the solution after a couple attempts, it can become a frustrating exercise in trial and error. The jukebox is not in the same place. Maybe it was involved in the fight somehow. Of course, making dialogue choices and seeing where the story might take you is part of the fun, but Sam's alter ego tends to spoil the affair. Early on, he seems like a voice of reason, worth consulting and listening to, but his input leads you in certain directions without equally strong cases being made for the opposing choice. As time goes on, the alter ego's advice starts to feel more and more like he's playing the role of a backseat gamer, constantly telling you what to do. He becomes less likable and more of an annoyance overall, lacking redeeming qualities to present him in a more favorable light. It doesn't help that some of the most significant moments near the end either remove elements of choice or feel entirely one-sided. Shut up. Coming back to Basswood was your idea. On the upside, Don't Nod's ability to write appealing characters is evident as you interact with some of the key folks around town. Your goddaughter Joan values honesty and clearly wants to be treated like an adult. Meanwhile, your old boss Walter is welcoming and ready to share a drink with you. Other characters are less developed, but typically have distinct quirks and personalities, like Tara, who speaks her mind without any filter, making her consistently inappropriate. Nice talking to you, Tara. Mm, was it? The trouble is that Sam himself is one of the hardest people to connect to. While it could be argued that it's part of his character flaws, he often feels dry and distant. Even in moments where he's lost or running inside his own mind, his emotions fall flat, unable to sell the panic he's going through. Sam, be more careful. Breathe. Focus. Visually, Twin Mirror presents a more realistic tone than some of Don't Nod's previous works. Character models and lighting look good on their own, but facial animations are stiff and often don't match the dialogue. The locations fare better, though. Every place you visit is decorated with lots of details that reflect the people that live there, as well as the history and struggles of Basswood itself. 
There's a lot to glean from examining the walls of the bar or poking through people's offices at the newspaper, making every space feel lived in. Finishing Twin Mirror takes about six to eight hours. With a completed save, you can go back to specific chapters to try new choices, but there are only a few moments that feel worth such experimentation. Even though cracking the case is pretty straightforward, the more traditional aspects of investigating Basswood and talking to the people that live there end up being more interesting than traits like Sam's Mind Palace and Alter Ego. There's still enough to appreciate here, but it feels underdeveloped. Like two voices in one head, Twin Mirror has a tendency to get in its own way. Next Gen has arrived, but we're also taking time to remember the gen that was. Tune in every other week as we take a year-by-year -year look back at the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. All of our videos are made possible by generous viewers just like you. If you like what you see, check out patreon.com slash easyallies to help us make more. Now to work out what happened while I was blacked out last night.